Two. Well, you, I could either play a new one or a, or a older one. One that might have played possibly, but I'm. We get, I know, we, we kind of put him on the spot. He just got here and we're like, come on, bring it. Bring it right now. Yeah. Brush the snow off your head and we want to hear music. Right. We need it to warm our souls. Okay, let me see. I'll start with a one I've played probably a bunch of times. This would be uh, In My Wake. It's on the EP that I have. And then um, that you can play it, stream it. Uh, yeah. It's... Um, I'll be eight years sober this year, so it's kind Congratulations. of Congrats. That's awesome. it's kind of something I wrote around uh, around that time. Yes. <clears throat> Look out, headed for a trap. Someone would warn me before I tasted sin. For that first drop of whiskey, I know I should have known how the story would end. Should have stuck with the straight and narrow, and still I let my life bend. I didn't mean to keep dragging my feet, no need to drag the I'm just sorry you got caught up in my way No surprise I lost control I've been swerving for a while Real drinks turn the car rails Reckless there's no denial I checked myself away I didn't know what else to do Scared the hell out of my family Hell, I scared myself too I didn't mean to keep dragging my feet No need to drag the leg I'm just sorry you got caught up in my way In my way You were my shade when I was taking heat, a barricade when life was at stake. I'm sorry for all those nights kept you away. I didn't mean to keep dragging my feet, no need to drag the leg. I'm just sorry you got caught up in my. In my way In my way In my way In my way, James Eugene Russell. That James. song must be a gift to the folks who helped you along the way. It must be a gift to be able to give that to them. That's kind of how I feel a lot. You know, it's like try to, it's kind of like an apology to people, and if you write a song, you can get it out to a lot more people than you can just running into them, <laughs> but, um, you know, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's just letting people know that I, I'm happy that, you know, I know I, I made things rough for people, and I'm glad that some people stuck around and helped me get to, to where I was supposed to be, so. Well, it's, and it's so nice to, to hear something like that. Jer, Jack Kerouac has a poem about don't use the telephone, people aren't ready to answer it, use poetry. Mm -hmm. But you're using music, as you yeah. said, that is a must. Well, and you can reach them when they're able to be reached. Both, yeah. Both it's, physically and emotionally and everything. And sometimes it's hard to say what you want to say. And a lot of times you're, I'm pretty bad at um, 
um, being too honest in my music and just let it. So I might as well just do it that way. Right. Well, <laughs> I'm not bad at it, but I guess it's just I just I like I tend to just leave it all out there on in songs and stuff like that, and you know. So it's, I don't know that I would say too honest. What makes you say too honest? No, not too I, honest. I, but like, not if so, yeah. I know what you're saying, but I just some people kinda... might you know be like, oh, you, you know, you talk about that and you know whatever. Some people don't like to give up too much of themselves in a song because they think it might make people think about judge them or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, you know, I, I think connection is better than yeah. Judgment. Yeah, that's why I feel too. You attract the right and, people, I guess, and it helps hearing other people talk about that stuff and think about it and it helps you go like, oh, I'm not the only one that wants to do this or is that way or feels that way about stuff. It's nice to hear other people going through the same trouble. I mean, it's been that way now in music mm -hmm. lately, talking mm -hmm. about mental health and addiction instead of, it used to be just, let's get messed up and party, which is which is fine for certain times, yeah. but it seems like, and you didn't talk about, you know, your struggles in your brain and all that stuff. And why you drink? <laughs> yeah. It wasn't always just breakups and and everything like that, you know, which oh, it never helped, you know. But but yeah, so like you kind of hear it more so in music than you know, especially Jason Isbell. Right, it's pretty huge with that one. You know, and everyone cheers when he sing, sings the silver part, which is cool. But like somebody like that talking about it, and it's not, yeah, you know, I don't know. It's nice to hear. Yeah. yeah. Thankfully, we're growing up, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we get to talk about it and. And not feel alone and have things possibly happen that, you know, yeah. we'd like to avoid. Yep. And I did hear some of you even say, like, talking about it is good. And you should also talk about, like, you know, just talking about always the bad stuff. It's like, I mean, yeah, it's like, I thought a lot, of, a lot of good things have happened when I was in those states and stuff like that, you know. And I heard somebody say, I was like, that's true. I can't say it was all bad, but it's, you got to hone it. People that have moderation... I'm really jealous of those people. <laughs> I just can't remember. All or nothing, huh? Yeah, it's like, I, you know, but no, there's certain times where it's like, you know, there, there are a lot of good times, but um, yeah, it's just, just trying to, I just wasn't good at slowing it down. <laughs> well, it sounds like you have much better times now. Yeah. I, no, you just got to, yeah. I mean, I mean, that, you got to find good. different, you know, and obviously it was becoming a father was a huge thing about it because I just, when you lose respect for yourself, um, it's pretty bad, and especially then when you have other people that are depending on you. It's like I just—I I was that person that I used to always. I just didn't want to be that person that didn't like it. Um, so that's why I just kind of disappeared. I had to kind of totally take myself out of. Not really, yeah. I, mean, I guess to, you know, just didn't go to shows as much. Didn't go play at home, but I just kind of just wasn't going anywhere because it just wasn't appealing, and it probably just wasn't. A good idea, but I don't know. It was weird. But, um, <laughs> well, change is good, and that pendulum can always swing back. Yeah, and I think, well, that's coming back to it now is good. And um, it's coming back in a different in a different way. And if you keep on continuing, you know, it's like even with music, you know, you start break, a band breaks up, another band starts, it's like it's always going to sound like exactly, not exactly, but unless you totally do a curveball type thing, but mm. I don't... I think a natural, but those I don't think are natural changes when people do that sometimes. I think just, I like the fact that I just was away from it and I came, I think I, I was just writing songs at home for no no purpose, no specific group, no specific people. And then when I recorded these songs, I just, I wanted, the, I knew what music I wanted behind it. And that's why I think it came the way it came and I'm pretty, came the, sounds the way it's, it sounds because of that, which I'm pretty happy. You know, there's no, didn't start a band for a specific idea or song or style or whatever. I just kind of writing, you know. And some people say some of these songs, if you took out the steel and fiddle and gave me a Marshall and a distorted Marshall and a Les Paul, it could have been a, one of my old band, Cardinal Sin songs, some of that, you know, which I like, I guess, because then it's just, it's natural. It's what I'm writing. It's me. It's not like, I mean, obviously, you'll. It sounds like other things here and there because I'm not that. You know, it's hard to not have that stuff show, which is good People to some are extent. Dynamic. Yeah, but um, yeah, no, I just kind of like that. It's just like I took the break, got my brain kind of a little bit more normal, um, and I able to. I just wanted the one thing that was missing was 
was the music. You know, I always say it's like when I was a little kid, music saved my life because just being a little weirdo, you know, you need to find your friends and eventually you find your friends because of music and stuff like that. Um, it was great. And then it almost killed me later in my adult years when you kind of get lost in the, the whole cliche of music and, you know, what you think you're supposed to do when your idols are, like, when you love Hank Williams and Grant Parsons, yeah. like, and you're like, it's like, oh, they didn't make it to 30. It's probably not the best. Right, right. <laughs> best Maybe people be, look up to, you know. You got to find someone not a little beyond 30. To yeah, look, so, you know, that's... Set my yeah. sights a little older now. Yep, so that's... Who made you know, it to, yeah. Because that was, like, you thought that was cool to be like, oh, I'm... Like, you planned for the hangover the next day and what you had to do because you knew you were going to be hungover. And that's just, like, I don't know. That's such a weird way to live. You know, well, like, what do I, you know, like, yeah, it's like... Uh, look, we're having a kid. Yeah, no, I can't do it when I like it. No, you, yeah, can, have, you, can yeah. move, you can call and stick to a lot of jobs, not to that one. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, yeah. You better be yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. pretty darn contagious, which means <laughs> it all that, for that sort of thing. But it, No, they. I and I always say they kind of... They saved my life too, so it's, yeah. But yeah, like so, it was, and then I was just away from every, and I missed music. So I feel good. It feels good the last couple of years of being able to come back to it in a different way, and but still kind of, you know, I'm slowly but surely finding out the parts of the old the old me and the new me how they work together. <laughs> that makes sense. It does. I don't know. I hate it to does, say new me or old me, but yeah. It, Different, you know, different stages of life. Well, and, and I just, because we, I'm wondering if you have an example of something like that, because I do understand it, but it, I do and I don't, if you know what I mean. Well, it's know? like more like this, I, it's partly just knowing the old, the old, people that know the old me, like from the certain aspects of, it's coming at this, just the music scene of like, um, oh God, now I'm confusing myself here. <laughs> but you know, there's a lot of people that know, know me from other, right. the, the other ways and, it's just, it's interesting to kind of do it more, you know, I don't know, just a different format, I guess. Um, I don't know if that really answered what I was saying. It, well, a different emotion, too. Like, yeah, you, it's definitely like different, you said, yeah. the punk days, you had more anger yeah, dealing you know, with all the stuff and like now. Yeah, it's like, and I just kind of complained about everything before and then just did the same thing the next day. I always, <laughs> I looked at all my lyrics, like old bands, I was like, the song's about... Like like breakups and then about drinking and then how much I didn't I was like oh I made a fool of myself I was like I'm, but then you kind of still sing about drinking and whatever because you just kind of like that's what you did and you thought yeah. that was what you do and then yeah like the EP that I put out was more my sober aspect of things and realizing like after taking time off realizing all the like how that's just not really a sustainable light like you can't just be a, a great person doing that um and trying to change myself and not change myself but at least um let people know I was aware of of that and that's when I had to change who um at least um the way I was acting and then like the newer record is a little bit of I mean there's obviously some old songs on there like older ones but the it is that whole like me not mental health necessarily but yes a little bit of just like talking about like still I hate the word fixing myself, but, you know, it's like, I get, I'm not, my brain acts differently than other people, it always has, it's always been, kind of put me in weird spots in schools, and, and when, you know, um, and it is all acceptance of, I, I know, it's like a constant nervous weirdo all the time, you know, it's like, and yeah, it's like, I used to use alcohol and stuff and to kind of stop those things, but, um, I am California sober, but, um, <laughs> um, but it's yeah it's just it's it's just more the new stuff is more uh, focusing on trying to fix the brain in a, in a legal way but I <laughs> feel like a lot of people always try to hide whatever they think is their weirdo and that is yeah, I used to always oh yeah, so, yeah yeah but now we kind of look at it like well that's my unique kind of I don't want to say superpower, but oh, well, that is. I've, I've yeah. said it's my superpower and my kryptonite. Yeah. Because yeah, like. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but it is, and like, that's the thing that is. It gives me a lot of good ideas, but then it's like I don't get to work on time, you know, and like, <laughs> or like I don't get. No, I just get. I but it's like all the like having ten projects that don't get finished, like all these things, songs. It's like 
Yeah. But I constantly have things flying around. Yeah, but all that's the place. creativity. That's the fun part. It's the adventure. Yeah, you no, have your own little valley fair going on. Oh, that's not a state fair. That'd be good. Like, yeah. There you go. It's probably more like the state fair. It's a little like. It's a little. Uh, Man after my own heart. There. That's a, you know, you know, I was just, I love a state fair. I, was like, I love it. I, I, I was a grand, I was a grand champion with chickens one year. I had some <gasps> pretty badass chickens one year. No way. I used to, yeah, I used to, grew up on like a small, like little farm. Um, so I went there with like um, sheep and chickens. Awesome. And one year I had some uh, pretty badass chickens. <clears throat> That's awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Well, now we're going to add that onto the website. Know, so I, Immediately. Like, <laughs> so, yeah, winner. But we used to like stay in the camper and stuff, like, because I'm from Rochester originally. You know, so we just drive up and stay in a camper for. On the, the, the ground? Yeah, so like, dude, I, and I grew up like, like for years, like, I could tell people exactly where it was, something. Yep. Like, oh, I. Because I walked, I spent the whole day, like, when I didn't have to do stuff, you just walk yeah. around everywhere oh. on that thing. I was, like, yeah, it was awesome. It's good, I, good memories. I used to work at the Wonders of Technology building. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I work at. You've done the scavenger hunts. Oh, and I've done scavenger hunts. Yeah. I have yep. great. But oh, when wow. my kids were little, this is a way to not spend $400 with kids at the fair. Is I would come up with a scavenger hunt. And you oh, have to nice. say, How big is the biggest pig? Yeah, they actually it, have those things, like the little kid things. They have like little, like you know, letters. Like try to find the thing that has. Oh, I know what you are talking about. Yes, yeah. yes, right. But the old wonders of technology. But yeah, well, and then they get, a, be, they get a little ribbon at the end. Which yeah, is great, yeah. So. No, I would admit, and it would be we would do them for all different. No, ages. it makes sense. Yeah, it I think sense. it started as a bachelor bachelor bachelorette party. Right, <laughs> my cousin was getting married. My my cousin and my cousin in law getting married, but. It's so much fun. I just think the fair is. No, I, I, I just, it's gotten kind of, yeah, it's definitely, I remember when it was uh, not as popular as it is now. <laughs> um, but it's like, great. It is what it is. You know, like it. Have you had an opportunity to play at all in the fair? No, that's. I'm like, let's put that up. That's yeah. something never, well, just because all the bands I used to play in never really made sense for that. And I've, it's a, it's a weird little bucket list of, like, something I want to do. That would least, be. You know, not, obviously, that. you know, one of these days I'll, I'll I'll make it happen somehow, hopefully. You know, I know enough friends and stuff like that have done it. So, I don't think it's like, super, you know, No, it's totally not like winning like, an Oscar. Yeah. But, um, but no, I mean, I, I like, one of these days, it'll, it'll, it'll hopefully happen. Just uh, just to say I did it, it'd be cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can we, can we implore upon you to play another song? Sure, that I can do that awesome. one. Um, yeah, that goes with my, uh, this is what, uh, one of the other ones, and this is kind of where the, what I was talking about. Just where my brain's been working. Um, but yeah, after I got out of bars and I got all those out of those jobs, I got became a mailman. After I got out of sober, um, yeah, I wrote this song. It this is kind of my my song about when I walk around all the time. I just it's I always talk about it before the song, but I you get a lot of time to think about stuff. Besides listening to the radio, like music and podcasts, I do a lot of that. But I'm by myself. That's a great, great I'm for. Kind of envious. Yeah, it's great for my. Yeah, it's really good for my brain, but it gives me a lot of time to reflect on your life and and I. Yeah. Jump all over the place. I'm like, so sometimes it's not always awesome. Is it cursing or anything? Yeah, because you yeah. think about like just how like dumb you were at in fourth grade about this one thing. <laughs> yeah. Because you're like thinking about so it. So close to the speedy <clears throat> champ, and then. Well, you just, just kind of think of like, I'm like, yeah. You know, like oh, should I do this or that, or I should have done that. You know, it's like you always reflect like, and also oh, I'll, yeah. I'll replay the day before, and did I say something? Stupid to somebody that I seem weird. You know, like it's, yeah, yeah it's it's a good time. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. But yeah, so this song's called uh, Broken Brain. All right. <clears throat> Broken brain, do I can 
Say you I can't get off the door Say I already to be one of my flipping favorites. Oh, well, thank you. You just can get get the heart there. That's probably from the, I had played in all those early 2000 emo bands, you know what I'm saying? It's all about emo, right? It's, right. No, no, I'm kidding. Uh, but no, but that, was the, that was that genre that we kind of were, and uh, they say country music is just farm emo. <laughs> yeah, I can. So, I, uh, <laughs> I heard that's that. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, basically, country music is far emo. So I, 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 I was like, well, that's true. Absolutely. <laughs> I have not heard that before. I gotta ponder that, but I, I can, I can see make a it. good T-shirt. Yeah, yeah. That would, yeah. I wish I could take credit for it. But I'm <laughs> I, I'm stunned just because your voice sounds so perfect paired in this genre. How, <laughs> how the punk was, because I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I can get the emotion of the punk, but you're too perfect right here. Oh, uh, it's, well, it's probably because I, it's, I, you know, I did, I was around and growing up, you know, just being on a, a far, in the farm. But I think, in my personal, I just didn't fit that music when I was younger. Yeah. Like I said, I was super, like, I think Guns N' Roses is what got me, like, super, like, I, uh, nerded out about it. I was like, whoa, what is this? And it just changed my life at like eight, you know, ten year old kid. Yeah. And then yeah, I always liked music, but you know, like monk the monkeys on like re, you know, <laughs> daytime stuff. Yeah, I always loved yeah. music. Yeah. But that's the music I heard, I was like, whoa. And I just finally you know, I didn't like growing up like late eighties country music and nineties country music isn't what what I heard on the radio, just I just I never liked it. So I never got into country music. Um I mean my mom played, you know, I wasn't really into, um, I like them now, like Dwight Yoakam and um, Conway Twitty, but those people back then, I was like, I was like, I can't handle it. That's why my mom would play a lot of that stuff, and, um, but yeah, so, um, but then eventually it was Guns N' Roses, and then my brother got me into, like, more alternative music, you know, so then I got into that, and it's like punk, it just kind of, yeah. it, it, it just kind of made, fit, fit my personality. Yeah. I don't, not... I don't seem like a, a farmer kid, really. Um, also, the, the small town, like the, and also country music with the weird racism aspect of it, I didn't like that. Always kind of came out in the, um, so punk rock. That's like, especially when punk stuff was like, I just always just kind of like didn't really give it enough chance. And there's always the, but then there's the good guys. I like the outlaw guys, and then I, I don't know what it is, but it somehow those two it. It all made sense when I figured out who was who else was out there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think it was just the aggression of of metal, of the the metal and punk, and also just the fact it was that I just fit those people. I mean, my personality got you know, being just a kid that just jumped around, and drove teachers crazy. I wasn't a mean kid, but I still got sent to those rooms where all the bad kids were. <laughs> and then eventually, that's you hear about that's I mean that's where I heard about Guns N' Roses. You know, it's like whatever. It is what it is. I just that's the type of people I kind of just my brain goes with not just a little odd people. So um, it made more sense than than country music for a long time until you see people like 
you hear people like Grant Parsons, who was the weirdo of his yeah. era, and you're like, oh, wow, okay. And then you hear, like, you see, you know, I start seeing punk bands that kind of had it, like even like, like Against Me had, like, this little bit of country music folk in it. It's just like, I liked it. Mm -hmm. I always, and I did kind of realize, like, kind of like country music, but I always hit it and stuff. And, um, but I didn't really do much about it. And then, um, because I probably was being around, it probably was there in my brain that it, like, you know, but then I eventually was hearing the people I should have liked, you know, like, you know, obviously when I, my mom didn't really love Hank Williams because she actually didn't like the fact he was a band, you know, like, mm. kind of, or like, in George Jones and stuff like that, which is just like, what? <laughs> oh, listen to his voice. Those are the... Just listen to his voice, though. Yeah. yeah. And she's yeah. like, yeah, but she remembers all the stories, though. Yeah. And the radio, and the, yeah. the newspapers, so and him just being a, yeah. a jackass, you know. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, no, it's okay. Um, but him just being like, it's like ruining, like, he's rotten. He's just a he, great voice horrible person <laughs> um Makes unfortunately music, yeah right? yep yeah, but um but yeah long story yeah sorry it was eventually then it was i was seen bands like lucero yeah like after trip you know when they were playing trip rock i was like whoa yeah. you know it was you could kind of hear like the southern rock kind of country but then it was like oh they're playing kind of stuff that i like kind of in a way i like you know i heard that jawbreaker cover they did and it's like it all made sense and then another friend then friend of mine says like if you don't like this he took me to see Hank 3 at first half like in the early 2000s and I was like and so, so basically it was yeah early 2000s it was like seeing Hank 3 at first half like a actual country yeah. music, actually country music played in, in in a way that was like that I understood mm -hmm. I was like oh wow but it was actually country music it wasn't like I was like this is perfect you know Lucero and then it was I think the early 2000s I talked about though Oh Brother We're Out though uh, soundtrack came out. Yes. And then you started hearing like, oh yeah, like blue, like kind of forgot about bluegrass yeah. music. Yeah. You know, I didn't, you know, and that's basically like the metal, metal of um, <laughs> folk music. I'm like, yeah. you watch those guys because yeah. then it went to you like, wow, it just kind of broadens. So many things just opened up in like the, let's probably say in the early 2000s. So it's you know, and it kind of, and I slowly, I I was still playing folk music for a long time as I was in the country stuff, but then eventually when the side projects became the main project when the punk band broke up. So, sorry I made that really long. Well, I, I like deep, That's good. deep cuts, deep thoughts. Yeah, so. Let's get what, what a, oh, sorry. What has been seeping into the newer music that you've been writing, recording, influences what? and... Oh, man. Um, some ways I do want to... I do with uh, I'd like to figure out how to. I'm trying to make it um, not necessarily different on purpose to make it different on purpose, but because uh, I even think of what I'm trying to do now. I'm not going for. A, I don't want to. I'm not trying to sound like '70s country or or this country or that country. Like the way radio just kind of whatever it happened to country music. It should it should have been more like just a regular pop station where you hear a pop song, you hear a rock song, you hear all the different things. Like country radio should have the rap radio, if you a rap or the bro country. But why was there never Justin Towns Earl? Uh, why was there never Jason Isbell or Sturgill? All those, all those things should exist. All those years, all the alt country, all the like that. All these years should have been in there with everything else. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just trying to write stuff that's what would it sound like if country music just progressed and was able to? I'm not. I don't know. With with the influence of being a kid who grew up on punk and. Nirvana and Green Day and all those things, but then I'm not trying to write punk music, but I don't know. Part of I just kind of want to make it sound like it's like this is how something could have progressed mm -hmm. if everything was just given a chance. If <laughs> so, all radio stations were college radio stations. Exactly. No, exactly. You know, I mean, that's no, that, that, yeah. that's exactly what. So, like, what I'm doing, what I want, I don't know. I'm just trying to write something that sounds not mixing it with on purpose. Like, I don't want to do a thing like where it's like, Taking these two, like, but just kind of like using like all my influences, and that's kind of what I did, and where I got to where I'm now is just using everything, like you know, even just some of the weird chord changes, you, you know, you know, John Reese and like Hot Snakes, my favorite band. You'd never realize that that listen to my music, but there are times I'd like to be able to make stuff more like a, I would love to do a, like a rock record that doesn't sound punk. Mm -hmm. Like if I mean I want to make it more rock, but then I'm scared that'll be too punk, but I don't know. I'm not sure. I just, I'm not sure what I want to do exactly, like, but I'm not going to do anything on purpose. 
well, I, think I, I guess I don't know. I'm just yeah. trying to do it naturally. Yeah. But I, there's certain times I just kind of feel like I want to, you know, I just want to try something that's like a slightly, you know, I don't know. Slightly, di slightly weird. Just like, like I said, just like myself, not too weird, but slightly weird. <laughs> I feel yeah. like that's a perfect combination. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I don't yeah. like. Yeah. yeah I, don't know. I always say it's like, I, you know, something that wouldn't scare us. I know, uh, uh, maybe or you know, but then I just want to get people into other things because then if you get into one thing, they might get into another. Well, that's I don't okay. know. I'm not sure if that's. Yeah. That would work, but I just yeah. like a little that's outside the box, but yeah. little, little outside the box, but still part of that box. Yeah. I don't want to. I always say like that. Don't forget about like the the. That's why country music got so bad, or at least with the popular stuff, is like forget about the once the origins, getting forgotten about. You start doing stuff like whoa, well, he, it's just not good. Like that could be cool. Like who knows? But when there's no, not a little. We need to have a little bit of blues in there somewhere. I yeah. think. Yeah. Maybe or well, something. I don't know. That's yeah. just me, but it's gotten a little. You know. But but also it should exist. It should just exist with everything else. Pro country should have existed. I'm not saying, <laughs> even maybe maybe not. But you know, but why wasn't? You know, there's a lot of good stuff through the '90s that could easily made it on college or country radio back then. That easily could have pushed some people into playing well, that style back in. You know. And that gets into so much of the industry of music. Yeah. Oh, I know. It drives you I crazy. mean, and that, yeah. that's the thing about it, is, and that's why college radio can play whatever. Yep. You know. The juxtaposition of, you know, from Dead Kennedys to Taylor Swift. Let's yes, go. No, that's, that's you know, the, and that's awesome. I think that's it, just the way. That's man, that's really how it. Well, and now I think some of the difficulty is with the all the online music. You have to say what genre you are. You are, which I think I'm. I am yeah. a former librarian. I think I'm. Yeah, no, it makes it. It, 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 makes, it makes sense, sense. Yeah. but it also kind of it pigeonholes you. You can get stuck in a spot. Let you choose as many sure. categories as you want to because because yeah. it's a simple library background. I'm like, well. If he says country, it might be western too. Might just drop into bluegrass. Yeah. Might drop well, into you know, and see also, see also, see also. Yep. You know. No, and there's like, um, with country, like, a lot of times I tell people, oh, it's like if I say country, they kind of like. Yeah. It's they might think radio, but a lot of people are like, oh, I don't like country music, but I do like Willie Nelson and Johnny Cash. I'm like, well, that is you do know that's country music, right? and there is a lot of people that play that, but they don't know, they don't really think about it that way, and then. Um, you know, I think my favorite compliment I get sometimes, or I've gotten a, hand, a handful of times, is that um, one person came up to me like, dude, you're making me like country music, or or it was like, somebody else is like, I normally don't like your style of music, but I, I really, actually really like what you're doing. Because yeah. it is that whole thing of like, not coming, but coming from a, diff, uh, a different spot and doing it, maybe taking... Yeah, just taking influence that they might recognize. That. Right. And that's what I'm saying about the bringing in, inf just bringing all the influences in. So many, and it might get them into something like country music or whatever. Yeah. Best thing about Because they don't, because a lot of yeah. times, yeah, because a lot of times they're, they, did, they know one little bit of it. They don't realize that there's like, I mean, there's a lot of weird country. There's, there's a lot different, oh, yeah. different styles that, I, you know. Yeah, there's, there's Southern the, Culture and the Skids, one of my favorite bands, you know, and that's kind of camp. Yeah, I mean, there's like the, I mean, you yeah, know, it's, there's like the, yeah, you can go blue, like, there's so many different ways of seeing people do it. That's like, there's, you know, I mean, the indie rock kind of country, like, what was that, uh, that guy actually got big, like, 10 or however many years ago with the, um, the Hey, Ha, uh, um, I forget what the band that is, Lemoniers. I, would, I, 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 I could hear what you were saying about that. Like, and that's, that but that was yeah. like, and I, yeah. I think that got some people into country music. You know, like, I'm, then there was the whole, like, the Mumford and Sons yep. stuff. And, all, and I guess yeah. that did sneak into popular radio, which is good. I just wish more of that got on the country radio, I guess. It's weird. But see how, like, people do want to hear it and they do like it. Um, I could talk about the, all this. Like, it drives <laughs> me nuts when, like, when people are like, oh, I don't like country. It's like, oh, you're only hearing, like, a, a weird little, like, window of it. And it's like, the dirty window is gross. <laughs> so, or, they, or actually, they should hear the, the one that was in the dive bar window. So, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm kidding. I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm talking about. Would you like to play another song? Yeah. Um, All right. Um, this, yeah, this and this is a, I'll probably it's probably one of my oldest country type songs I wrote. And this is one of the ones I wrote when I was in a punk band. When I was kind of wanting to nice. play. It. Yeah, this is, yeah, I'd probably say this is almost 20 years old, I believe. It's gonna. 
And I did, it was not, um, the Cardinal said, said no way to it a long time ago. And then um, I kind of just always kind of kept it as a song. And I did play it in a country band. And then um, that band broke up. The Prairie, it was called the Prairie Sons. Um, I still play it. Uh, I'm going to re record it on this newest record. Because then you know, the other version was all right. I just, but I, I like this song. It's a song. It's about an old breakup with somebody that, um, yeah, just, you know, it was an old breakup, just my drinking wasn't a good thing. And uh, but then in the song, I still talk about how I want to drink to get over it at all. It's a little silly. Um, but yeah. But um, and I do always, I don't know if I should talk. This person now is a politician, and I think it's really cool because she put, help get um, those delicious little gummy things through, uh, there through you in, go. into the arms of, uh, you know, so if my drinking was a thing that chased her away a long time ago, she's uh, helped with this you sobriety. Chased her to a good place, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's, I'm, whatever. But um, that was a long time ago. Um, yeah, that's what this, uh, um, yeah, okay. Okay. I woke up late, still in my clothes. Promise not to tell a soul. I sleep on the couch almost every night. The TV is like my night light. <laughs> stay here after hours. Have another drink. Helps me sleep, helps me think so about her. I drove around drunk again. Not bragging, hope you understand. I know I'm lucky I'm at home, safe and sound. With no other police around Stay here after hours Have another drink so it Helps me sleep Helps me think so about Her I woke up late again, still in my clothes. Doesn't matter, everybody knows. Getting sick and tired of all the same old. Second guessing myself, she knows I told you so. And I stay here after hours Have another drink Helps me sleep Helps me think about her I stay here after hours Have another drink Helps me sleep Helps me think about her Oh please don't think less of me If I won't think less about her Oh please don't think less of me If I want to think less about her
James Eugene Russell on Mostly Minnesota Music on WMCN, 91.7 FM. Mostly hit, mostly good notes, too. So. <laughs> mostly good notes, yes, yeah, yes, I got, yes. I got some yeah, good, got yeah, some yeah. Good. Yeah. Mostly good notes. Mostly I, good I apologize. Notes. Thank you, guys. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> I want to interrupt. I had to say it. <laughs> it's, it's got the clever phrasing that I love so much in country-ish music. You know, don't think less about me if I oh, don't think you. less about her. I mean, I, you know. Well, it's something, you know, it's like, well, it's. It's, you're trying to drink it away, and then you're like, us. Oh, you still want something. I think, you know, it's like, yes. Yeah, sorry, I'm, <laughs> it's just, yeah. No, I. Yeah. I mean, oh, thanks. Yeah, I, I, that, I, It's really the phrasings in so many country songs. My I, dad loves country music. I, we still live it. I listen to it when we're in the car. You know? <coughs> Excuse me. With the, you know, if you don't leave me, I'll find someone who will. That, that sort of <laughs> clever lines. I always, oh, yeah. always yep. appreciate that. You know, nice. and it's. It adds, it just adds a little bit of sugar to the medicine of the message of the song. Nice. Yeah, it's like having, yeah, you know, what's that? Justin Towns are all, I listened to it the other day. It's like, if you, if, if you haven't planned on leaving, well, you really ought to be type of thing. It's like, you know, yeah. like, or something like that. Well, uh, yeah, it's there. basically like, oh, you haven't, if you haven't left yet, well, you're probably good. <laughs> probably, just yeah. Yeah, you know, or just. You're not paying attention. Yeah, yeah. There's, uh, yeah it's funny. <laughs> yeah, all of those. I mean, I just I just love any of those kind of clever, clever phrasings, I think, are... And I think that's what you get so much from some of the country music. Because what you... Really, the people who are really good at their game put their 10,000 hours into... Oh, thank you. ...playing or listening or reading or everything about it. And I think that's where you're in a place right now where you're trying to figure out how to Maybe distill trying, it yeah. and, and you know, think, produce take it. All the, trying to take all the hours of... You know, it's like going back and... Uh, on the, you know, your notes of all the horrible things that's happened. So you're like, how can I make songs out of this stuff? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's good times. But yeah, it's, you know, it's like, <laughs> well, then I have to ask: do you do you sort of do you sort of do that? Go through like old well, notebooks I have, or, or I do have what does inspire you? I do have no, I do have books of like lyrics and stuff that I sometimes I I can't read the stuff. It's 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 just oh. and I've used some of the things over again and. Uh, but there is a lot of ideas and like just writing stuff down. I have just some weird scribbles of books, but nothing like I don't have books of like lyrics and stuff like that. Because I mean, yeah. Because I think I even got like it was just such a long period of time. I just played in my basement and never really write the stuff down very much. And I mean, I probably lost a lot of stuff too. Yeah. And, um, you need a nanny cam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did have like the the mic things and the, the phone stuff is always good. Um, and like a little recorder or just whatever. Um, just trying to keep ideas as long as possible. I had, and I, the good ones I think stayed. And I probably reworked some of those, you know. Train Wreck is probably a, is a, a, a very old one I wrote probably right when that last country band was breaking up. So I had that one for many years before I recorded it. And I probably played it in a few different keys. I, I had another verse I think in it that I didn't, that I realized I didn't need later. <laughs> I don't know, it's just, you kind of, and then that's, I probably need to record the songs because I probably would have changed it by now again or something. You said it's hard when you're the only person, you know. You, yeah, you kinda, that's what we hear, you know, yeah. You kind of, yeah. you can really go over something really bad or, you know, for years I told myself that it, I just, the songs I didn't like, I just didn't like what I was, I just didn't know if I was any good anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and you just kind of just, I just play, I was like, I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure if I can, if I could, if, if this, because I was just, yeah, I don't know. It was weird, yeah. There was many years I didn't think I was, I thought I was done, honestly. You know? Well, that, as Heather says, that's where you need a community. You mm -hmm. know, it's all about the community and and the people that you trust. Yeah. You know, to say, you, you, you sang four, three were awesome. <laughs> you know, you, like, you mm -hmm. love that person who's like, all right, tell me yeah. which one. You know, you all don't right. have to listen to them, but you're like, all right, I, that that makes me appreciate the yeses so much more than yeah. I would have if you're like, those were all but, awesome. I mean, but then that goes with my band, and that's where... Uh, at least the, especially the, I'd say the rhythm section is my, uh, with Becky on drums, my wife, and then one of my oldest, uh, my oldest best friends on bass. And, you know, and he was even one that's like, oh man, I really liked, when I did some like a solo thing at a, I, I just did a few songs. Um, it was like a um, still kicking, still kicking mm -hmm. thing, because um, for that, because that was. Yeah, nice. Because um, that was started with, Partly because of my old friend Andy, who took his life um, 
And that's why I did that show. Sorry, yeah. And then um, my friend Trent was he also played because he you know all the knowing Andy, and he's like I really liked what you do. I'd like you know I'd like to play with you. And I was like well sure you know it, it all kind of and that's kind of how the live thing happened at least. And then well the pandemic happened like a little bit after that. So then okay, I just kind of so it all kind of happened like uh you know remotely after that and then that that's where we are now. I'm looking at the clock on the wall. Would you like to play one more song? Oh, man. That's up to you. Can, Now's I the time try. is all I'm going to say. Because we're... Yep. We, I'm going to okay. try another... Mm -hmm. I'm going to see if I can... Like I said, mostly Minnesota music and mostly... uh most, most, mostly wrong. Mostly write uh, chords and lyrics. <laughs> It sounds good to us. Yeah. All right. I'm going to try... This is a... Uh, usually the song's faster and has... I like to... Good, good music. I like to play with fancy people. You know, I play the three the three chords and then I play they make them sound like eight, I always say. Nice. Um, <laughs> but um but I'm gonna try it without it. It's uh this song's about the uh I kinda think about I'm spending all the time uh Mitch Hedberg has a joke uh, you know says, I used to do drugs. I still do, but I used to too. <laughs> yeah, which is funny. That's but, a little but, but, like. <laughs> but then I always kinda say is like, you know, you You try to fix your brain, you do your own stuff, thinking that's helping. That doesn't work. And then you, you quit. You finally able to quit. Then you go to a doctor to fix your brain the right way, and then they give you drugs. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, so yeah. I still, I, yeah. I, 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 used to do, I used to do drugs, I still do, and I used to too. Yeah. So that's why, right. here you go. Sorry about that. The song is called Learn As I Go. Well, new stuff, we're halfway through a, awesome. um, a full length. We got like six songs, kind of. Um, pretty pretty darn close, finished, and I'll, I'll do the 
second batch here a little bit. But, um, nice. Yeah, no, I've had lots, all the, lots of good musicians are on it, and all the people in town from are going to be on it. You know, so uh, people who see me play live with, they're usually all on it. Um, yeah, so it, it, it should be good. I'm nice. pretty excited. Like, yeah, th all three fiddle players are going to be on it. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, uh, Fantastic. not at the same time, but that would be interesting. That's but, um, interesting. That's but yeah, so that hopefully will, it'll be sometime this next, this coming year, hopefully. Okay. A full length, 12 songs, hopefully. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we have that to look forward to. And then, Thank yes. I will, oh, I will yes. say, I play in this Saturday. Thank you. I'm Ooh. sorry. Oh, I didn't know if I was. No, no please do. Sorry, I play in this Saturday at the White Squirrel. It's at 1 p.m. and it's all ages, which is actually nice. kind of awesome. Nice. So nice. anyone that has the, the nighttime stuff, um, hard to do. This is good for the people's kids. And and, it, and it's always free, although yep. they're always welcome to tip the musicians. Yep. Yep. But yeah, and that's a casual place. And often they have a food truck there during the day. Yeah, I, you know, I haven't done the day. Th I'm a little excited, though. About yeah, it. yeah. You know, it's a great My kids are, are going to be there. I'm trying to talk them into doing a song with me. Oh, Woo! awesome. Not one of my, but I might do one of the one they like. Um, and then um. And I think what is it? Um, and then uh, April fifth, I believe I'm doing that uh, Phantom Fields record release show. Oh, fantastic! With the, the right Great. here, uh, the right here, and uh, uh, Red Wing Blackbird is also nice. playing. Oh, nice! Yeah, so that's uh, that'll be a, another Saturday, like a couple months after, or a couple weeks. A weeks after, yeah. Yeah, yeah so but yeah, Coming this up. this Saturday, well, awesome. one p.m. All ages, and the other ones at Mortimer's. Uh, yep. Yeah. So the first one at the White Squirrel, one p.m. on Saturday. So. All right. No, thank you guys so much. You guys thank, are you. Awesome. thank you. Thank you. Thanks very you much. Do. Thank you. Yeah. Should we finish off with one one last song? We we will not be here next week, but two weeks from now, we will be back playing music, and hope that you all will listen. But thank you for listening to Mostly Minnesota Music on WMCN ninety one point seven FM on the beautiful McAllister College campus in St. Paul. We're gonna go out with the last rebel sundown kick around. And the last rebel is playing in St. Joe's on May 31st. Thank you. Did, did sorry, if I, uh, no, 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 I, no, no. I didn't realize no. I was like, I probably, if I'd be like, those people were really bummed if I was like, oh crap, I didn't say anything about the show. So. Well, and I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I had looked at it and I wasn't sure and if I, you did, so I normally jumped, I ask. And, and I, I, yeah. I jumped around, like, I was like, I was trying to no, stay No, that focused. was great. You're good. I think you just, and, our only, and I don't do this very often. And, and, you know, we're trying to do good modeling, like, to switch over to the DJs. So that's where I had to come. No, 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 no. That, and that's why I was like, oh God, sorry. No, I get it. No. Perfect. Oh my gosh, um, and Santa will not be around.